introduction of who I am. My first degree was chemistry. Then I went off to Africa and I actually did a PhD in Zulu linguistics. After about 15 years, I came back to Australia and I started being a designer for multimedia. I changed from rural Africa and teaching science in schools that had no electricity or running water to designing top-end multimedia. So that's a bit of a career shift again. And then my kids went to university and I thought, oh, yeah, time to go again. And so I went off to Hong Kong. I've been working in university level about the design of teaching and learning. So I basically had four different phases in uh, my career. And I'm telling you, I haven't finished yet. I've got a whole pile of interesting things that I still want to do in life. I asked your teachers this morning, and basically they wanted you to become independent learners. In the 21st century, written media, library linguistic, global literacy, visual literacy, cultural literacy, network literacy, computer literacy. These are the things that are going to keep you um, able to be adaptable to whatever happens to you in your life. The web. When I came back to, as a multimedia designer, it was here. It basically about designing material that students would access and that was it. And what's happened in the last, it's less than 20 years. The web has moved into this complex, what we call Web 2 world, where user-generated content, the stuff that you produce, is growing in uh, content. The whole web itself is growing. And now we're moving into what's called the Web 3 world. So the web is becoming something that is not only about information that is uh, published from some sort of authoritative source and published from users in some sort of um, process. It's also personalized in a way that means that it's now, um, that might be a scary thing because it can be personalized to exclude information as well as personalized to include it. But these days, What's happening is that user-generated content is actually more than the stuff that's come from the formal authoritative sources. So things are changing. The web is now basically ubiquitous. I've already heard, I think it's four comments about the bandwidth in Malaysia. So I guess maybe there's some challenges uh, about bandwidth. But nevertheless, overall, this process of the web now is that we have a huge range of technologies available. We have obviously email, social media, a whole pile of access to virtual worlds and so on. Taylor's University is trying to do is to look at this complex situation and try and design the best sort of environment to make use of it. So it is going to cost a great deal of money for the university to develop the sorts of platforms and infrastructure that will enable the capacity of the web to be used. Now, I'm saying to you right now that the power lies with you. You know, let's uh, make sure that what you want is what sort of technology you would like to use, what sort of technology uh, seems to work for you, this is what e-learning is about, because you're enrolled in a formal institution. So it is about being enrolled in something that will give you a qualification at the end. At my university, this diagram, the bits that are in blue and purple, is our teaching and learning policy. Every course at the Chinese university has to actually have clearly defined learning outcomes and clear statements of what's expected, really good assessment. If you have a learning outcome that says you're going to critically evaluate, then however you're going to be assessed on it has to be something that asks you to critically evaluate. So you have to do a project or a, an assignment or something in order to prove it. We actually see this is the bit that's important. The technology comes to support that. So if somebody says to me, I want to do some e-learning, I want to use Google Docs, I'll say, no, that's not the right way about it. If you come to me and you say, I want my students to actually get together in groups and do authentic problems, 
then we'll talk about the technology that will support it. When we talk about technology, we talk about the things that are going to make that interesting. The courses that had games and simulations, used peer reviews online, uh, had really good materials and so on. So in other words, I found the very best courses I could find. To me, this is a really nice learning experience for students. The teacher's not there. The teacher's job is to develop this initial case. And then it's the student's job to get on with the learning. And of course, if they've got any questions or if disagreements at any stage, then the teacher's around. If the teacher just explains the case, how many of you have online discussions in the courses that you have? Hands up. About a quarter. How many of you have quizzes in the courses that you're in? About a quarter. How many of you do debates online? How many of you? Yeah, we get some. Good, excellent. How many of you do simulations? You see, these are the sorts of things that make technology interesting because they're linked to the sorts of things you need to know. E-learning is about what you do, not about what the teacher does. And I ask the students in those courses to talk about what they thought about the design of the course and what they thought about learning. There is no relationship between, at least in students' views, on lots of information. They didn't see any relationship between whether or not teachers put lots of information on their course site or whether they had lots of interactive features like quizzes and discussion forums and so on. If you ask them um, what is good for learning, they will say that group work, communication skills make them motivated. The sorts of courses where they learn understanding of fundamental concepts, where they have relevant examples, where they feel that they're getting literate, those sorts of courses tend to make them get a deep approach to learning and be motivated. You as students should be saying to your teachers that you don't want just notes and PowerPoints. You want the sorts of activities that lead to that. When I ask my students how much they use technology, they don't actually use it enough. Except for lots of information and notes, if I ask students what they want, then they will tell me the blue line that they actually want a lot more. The problem partly is that the students, I don't think, say enough what they want. They play a sort of uh, security game. They do what they need to do in order to get the marks to get through. And this is a, a little representation of evolution, that we started like this and we got upright and then we started using desktop computers. And so now what we have to do is to become upright again. So we use mobile technology. And that sort of concept, that this will actually begin to be the next wave. Not only is it about the Web3, where you've got this huge amount of uh, generation of content, personalised webs and so on, it's now available um, in your hand. How much of the e-learning that you currently do would you call interactive? Now, I'd like you to choose more than 50%, 50 and 30, less than 30, Okay, is that because what you're doing is looking at notes and PowerPoints online? This is me being subversive here. I want you to give feedback to your teachers about the sorts of things that you think are useful for learning. What my students are telling me and I am telling their teachers and they are telling their teachers and we are getting change. What the students value for learning is things which are interactive things which enable them to solve problems, develop communication skills, seek the ability to manage knowledge and manage people. Now, one of the things that I think is important is that universities begin to see that the sorts of things which are interesting and useful are bits on the go, you know, so that some of the information that you may need to read needs to be bite-sized as well. What is 
the most important thing you would like Taylor's University to provide for you in the way of technology to support your learning? Better wireless signals. Better wireless, I've heard that one. E Access to ebooks. Does the library have a lot of ebooks? No. That's a bit surprising because ebooks are cheaper than real books when they come through a uni yeah, library consortium. Better computers. Oh, so in other words, you've got enough computers, but they're not high end enough. Okay, in the library or in le learn, you know, spaces? Anywhere. Okay, computers need more RAM. Safe assign report, it takes two days to generate. Safe assign, two days, excellent, yes? Better train lecturers by using ICT products. And again, I had conversations. That's part of what the university is thinking about in this e learning process is providing a much better support for teachers. One of the things that I do, and you might like to think about suggesting this, is that at my university, because you know we've got old professors as well, we actually employ a, a number of young graduates who actually help the teachers you know, one on one to, to be trained in how to use uh, technology. It's a big thing, it's a generational thing, and requires um, quite some investment. I'll say thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.